And we're pleased to be joined now by our good friend, we'll call him the political insider, Dick Morris, who also does uh, talk radio up in Philadelphia. And uh, Dick, we thank you for spending some time with us today uh, here on, uh, on America's Forum. Thanks so much for your time. It's good to be with you, J.D. Uh, Dick, first let's go to the, uh, the killing of Major General Harold Green yesterday in Afghanistan. We've heard of another uh, attack within the Afghan structure, I guess Afghan on Afghan violence, but the situation that has developed there internationally, what should be the American response? Well, uh, I think that all over the, you, all over the uh, planet, you're seeing the effects of Obama's policies coming home to roost uh, before he leaves office. And uh, whether it's the ISIS or whatever they're called taking over Iraq or the uh, Taliban nipping at our heels as we move out of Afghanistan uh, or the uh, Hamas building these huge tunnels under the Gaza uh, to kill kids in kindergarten in Israel, you're seeing the consequences of Obama's weakness in foreign policy. And this is very devastating for a president because foreign policy is his thing. And in how he handles foreign policy, Americans get a sense of how strong he is, how resolute he is, how competent, how on top of things. Uh, when George Bush, 41, stood up to Saddam Hussein, all talks of his being wimpy went out the window. Uh, when John Kennedy stood up in the Cuban Missile Crisis and averted a world war, all talks of his being fallow and inexperienced went out the window. Dick. On the other hand, when Johnson got embroiled in Vietnam and didn't seem to have any end to it, uh, all talks about him being a wonderful, uh, fabulous new president disappeared. And I think that the problem is that Obama doesn't do anything in response to these crises. He barely acts as if he's commander in chief. Uh, he goes to fundraisers and plays golf and nothing seems to get to him and he doesn't seem to be doing anything. And it's Dick, hurting in, his ratings very badly. Dick, in your opinion, should this be labeled a terrorist attack? And do you consider this to be a setback for the United States in regards to our progress that we've tried to make in Afghanistan? Well, I'm not sure it's a terrorist attack. It's an act of war. And we're fighting the Taliban. And I wouldn't characterize this as terrorist any more than an American soldier being killed on the battlefield. The whole country is a battlefield. Uh, but I do think that Obama's been trying to sell uh, a complete canard, uh, which is that we have the situation in Afghanistan under control, and we're pulling out because we've accomplished our mission, and now we're handing it over to a government that should be able to protect itself and keep the Taliban at bay. None of those are true. We're pulling out because of a political timetable that Obama needs to be out of there by the time he leaves the White House because he promised to do that. Uh, just like we're closing down Guantanamo, despite all evidence that we need it because of Obama's campaign commitment. Well, do you consider uh, this, this case, though, to be a the sign? The Taliban's not going to cooperate. But do you consider this to be a sign of weakness for us in oh, yeah. the Afghanistan region? Sure, sure, I do. Uh, the first of many. Uh, I think that as we pull out of Afghanistan, you're going to see lots of ambushes, lots of casualties. Hardest thing to do, any general will tell you, is to retreat when you're actively engaged in fighting. Uh, and because your manpower diminishes, your ability to protect your people drops and your vulnerability increases. Dick, we want to take a moment now. Rear Admiral uh, Kirby weighed in on the attack in Afghanistan and the threat of future attacks. We want to take a listen to what he had to say. Afghanistan is still a war zone. Uh, so uh, it's impossible to eliminate uh, completely eliminate that threat, I think, particularly in a place like Afghanistan. But, but you can work hard to, to mitigate it and minimize it, and ISAF has done that. And Dick, as we hear the rear admiral there, he's uh, trying to pick his way through basically a, a political minefield. You outlined how this is a weakness for the United States. Is this an object lesson in, uh, in the dangers of putting politics back home over security and status of our forces in a foreign country? Oh, it certainly is. Um, the, the issue here is how do you get off the back of the tiger? Uh, we pulled out of Iraq because thanks to General Petraeus, we defeated the enemy in Iraq. 
and then because we didn't leave a residual force there, we permitted it to grow up again and become a serious threat to the government we installed. But in Afghanistan, we've never won that war. Uh, we've made some progress from time to time. We've set our Taliban back on its heels. We certainly have stopped al-Qaeda from using that area to launch terrorist attacks like they did on 9-11. Uh, but we haven't won the war. And until we do, if we're pulling out, uh, we're going to face significant casualties on the way out. Uh, and it's going to look as ugly in some ways as the withdrawal from Vietnam did. Dick, let's change subjects with that sobering image in our mind. I think of the helicopter over the embassy in Saigon in the mid-70s. But let's bring it back home. Illegal immigration. You wrote a recent column on that subject. You write in part, the question now really boils down, boils down to whether uh, we make a choice between letting illegals stay or sending them back home. So, Dick, which should it be? Is it time to send this new influx oh, of illegals home? Oh, we should stop them at the border, turn them right around and send them back out uh, without any due process, without any hearings, uh, without even an overnight stay. Uh, I think that we just have to get rid of them as soon as they come in. That's the only way to stop a few further flow. But my political point here is that in the past, the immigration debate was very nuanced. What rights should they have during the amnesty period? Uh, how, how should we know if the border is being secured? Uh, should they be represented by counsel? Are the hearings, should the hearings be expedited? And so on. Now that's all gone. And it's become a very simple question of in or out. And there was recently a poll in the Wall Street Journal, NBC, came out today that gave people two choices and arguments. And on the one side, they said, some people say we should turn them aside at the border and send them directly home, and that anything other than that will encourage more to come. Dick. And other people say that they're sometimes uh, have serious problems in returning to the area. They could be at risk, it could be dangerous, and we should vet those people and only return those where it's safe. Two good arguments. 51% said send them home, 42% said go through the process. And Obama is now with the 42, as is the Democratic Party. And this is going to be the major cause of their defeat in the midterm elections, because everybody understands the difference between in and out. And if in a question like that, that practically begs you to say keep them here, you get a majority saying send them home, you know that the outs are gonna win. Dick, with only a few minutes remaining, Newt Gingrich uh, is urging Republicans right now to make the midterms a referendum on Obama's immigration policies. Your thoughts, a good tactic? Yeah, I read Newt's comments, and I think they're exactly right. Uh, I think that we should make it a referendum on that, uh, because I, I think that the issue of in versus out is so clear and so compelling, and the precedent of letting them in uh, so horrific in terms of opening the border to anybody that wants to come here that I think Americans will gladly vote on that basis. And, on and the other hand, I also think we shouldn't forget Obamacare, which is getting less and less popular as more and more people use it. Certainly that can be an effective one-two punch in the midterms, but to the, the future question of the conservative coalition or the Republican Party, uh, you still have a, a very... Um, assertive establishment wing talking about uh, amnesty or some sort of accommodation, and you got the grassroots, regardless of party labels, saying send them home. The poll in the Wall Street Journal yeah. that you cited today, Dick, it, does that mark the sea change now where we get back to securing the border and no amnesty and calling illegal immigration what it is, illegal? Uh, well, J.D., I think that's yesterday's fight. Uh, I think that the kids showing up at the border has superseded that issue. Uh, it's no longer a question of how do we process them, how gradually do we do amnesty, how illegal are they, and all of that. It's no longer even about the 11 million people in the U.S. It's about the 100,000 kids who showed up at the border, or are showing up at the border this year, 150 next year. And that's become the crucial issue. And on that, it's very simple, in or out. And I'm struck that on that issue and on Obamacare, there is no real difference among Republicans on that. Establishment and Tea Party both basically have the same point of view. So with a minute remaining, this situation portends 
a really strong showing for the Republicans at the midterm. In this minute that remains, Dick, yes, is there anything that can change that situation as exists right now? Well, of course, reality can always change. <laughs> uh, at, but the sign that uh, the signs that we're getting uh, are that Obama is going to sign an executive order uh, stopping deportations entirely, except for those few who were convicted of violent crimes, and uh, that's going to make this situation even worse from the point of view of the Democrats. Uh, you have two really good issues here, Obamacare and the border. And it's no longer a debate about immigration or amnesty or any of that. It's about the border. And that's just where the Republicans need it to be. And that's where we're going to leave it. Dick Morris, uh, you know whereof you speak. We thank you for joining us today from Philadelphia. Look forward to visiting with you again. Well, that's Dick Morris's take. What's yours? Why don't you tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum.